Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop, where today we're going to take you to another era, an earlier time, where many young boys and girls had a paper route and a little red wagon to cart them around in. I'll show you how to build this classic next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Today we're in Rochester, New York, at the Strong Museum, which is a collection of collections of ordinary objects used in the household and at the workplace by Americans since 1820. And one of the more popular exhibits is right here, One History Place. It's where children three to seven years old can pretend they're in the Victorian age. Ah, the kitchen. And a nice work table. Maybe we can build one of those at the shop. And look at this, a black iron stove. My grandmother used to have one just like that. And this, I guess, represents the attic, grandma's attic. Now down here is the Victorian parlor, outfitted in all the period pieces, including some toys. Now the museum was kind enough today to bring out of storage this wagon so I could show it to you. Wagons like this were made in toy factories starting about 1875. Now this one's a little younger, about 1920. They also had a copy of the original trade catalog that came with it. And I love the first line. Parents, don't worry about their boy's thoughts or his deeds when he has an auto wheel. Great line. Now I can see from this wagon that they haven't done any better solving some of the problems than we have. The handle still is in the way. And where the handle pivots, can you imagine how many fingers have been pinched in there? But they did get the wheels right. Wooden wheels with metal banding. I don't even know how to start building one of those. But there are some good ideas, and I love the proportions. I think I'll check it out a little closer. Well, it holds the road pretty well. And it turns on a dime. And the fit and finish is pretty good. Well, what do you think? of our version of the old-fashioned child's wooden wagon. It's made out of oak and plywood, has some removable sides, and the wheels I actually picked up at my hardware store, and they're just sold as replacement wheels. They have ball bearings. Also, here's a couple pieces of threaded rod, some nuts and washers. And I did spend quite a bit of time in my hardware store picking up all the pieces that I needed. The handle is fashioned from a piece of oak and is attached to a one-inch oak dowel that leads down to the steering system that even the guys in Detroit might want to take a look at. But there is one warning, there are no brakes, so use with caution. Now if you'd like to build one of these for your child or your grandchild or even yourself, a measured drawing and a materials list is available. And you'll hear more about that before this program ends. Now, I'd also like to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now, to get started on today's project, I want to take these four pieces of oak, which will form the sides of the wagon. And the first step is to put a dado, the back side and front side of the long rail, to receive the front and back of the wagon. So I've set up my table saw with a stacked dado head cutter. It's set for a three quarter inch width and a quarter inch depth. And I've also set up a gauge block to position it in the right place. Now here's the whole base sort of loosely put together. 
And here's a piece of half-inch MDO plywood, which I'm going to use for the bottom. Now, this plywood will be supported in the rails with a half-inch dado that runs all the way around. Now, the dado in the short pieces can run end-to-end, -end, but if I run the dado on the long pieces all the way through, it's going to show. So I want to use what's known as a stopped dado. So I've set up my router table with a half-inch straight-cutting bit. I've adjusted the fence to be the right distance away, and I've put two indicator marks, which tell me where to drop it on and where to remove it so that the dado won't show beyond the end. Now, because this is oak, I've only done the dado to a depth of 3 16 of an inch. I'm going to raise the bit another 3 16 and run all the pieces through again. Now, this wagon will probably sit outside in the weather where it's going to take a lot of abuse. So to hold the sides firmly together, I've installed a rust-resistant threaded rod that runs side to side with a nut and washer on each end. Now that also sits in a little dado so that it's recessed and out of the way. The dado is 3 16 by 3 16 So to make that, I'm going to use the table saw blade alone, which is an eighth of an inch wide, make one pass, then move the fence a 16th and make the second pass. The washer and the nut for the threaded rod is recessed in the side. To do that, I'm going to use a 5 8 inch Forstner bit and make a quarter inch counter bore. The through hole for the rod is made with a 7 seconds drill bit. Well, now I've set my drill press up with my mortising attachment and outfitted it with the 3 8 inch square chisel. And that allows me to make the mortises in the rails that will receive the stakes for the removable sides. Now to take the sharp corners off all the exposed edges, I'm just using this little tool. It's a little angle and a couple blades. Of course, you could also use a block plane. I don't want any sharp corners on this project. Now I just slide the threaded rod through the assembly, put on a washer and a nut, and drive the whole thing tight. That ought to do it. Now, with the base of the wagon completed, I'm ready to start working on the rear suspension. And the first piece is this piece of plywood, which needs a dado cut in it to recess the axle. You might have noticed I didn't even bother setting up my dado head. Just moved the fence once. That's all it took. Okay, now using my jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, I've made a 90 degree notch in this channel aluminum. And now what I'm going to do is just bend it around the piece of plywood. I've just marked the dado, which is also the location of the axle, on the channel. Now I need to drill a half inch hole for the axle. So I've set up my step drill in the drill press. Each step is a sixteenth of an inch bigger. Okay, now 
on the top of the channel that goes under the wagon, I need two quarter inch holes to bolt it in place. Okay, now I just need to mark the piece of plywood so I can remove a little material so it'll clear the bolt. Now the rear axle is braced with some aluminum angle, one at each rear wheel. There are two of them and they happen to be mirror images of one another. I've laid out and cut one and now I'm set up to cut the next one. I'm going to make this cut first just using my handheld jigsaw and a metal cutting blade. And now on the other end of the piece. I'll just bend the end that attaches to the bottom of the wagon at about 45 degrees. Now there's a hole for the axle and now I need one for where it gets attached to the bottom of the base. Now we can put some of it together. A brace, a piece of the threaded rod with one nut on the end. Slide it through. Put another brace on. And another nut. Now what I can do is mark out for my holes at the lower end of the brace, drill them, and fasten it to the bottom. Okay, that takes care of the braces. Now for the wheels. First a washer on the axle, then the wheel, another washer, and a special nut that I picked up at the hardware store which is readily available, a locking nut. There's a little nylon ring in there and that helps keep it on so it won't spin off as the wheel turns. I want to just snug everything up, not too tight. Let's take another look at our prototype and check out the front suspension. It consists of an oak post, solid oak, through which a bolt passes. Then there's a series of washers, then this plywood yoke, and then underneath that, the axle assembly, and the bolt connects all these pieces together. Now here are two pieces of solid oak that I've glued and screwed together to make the post. I want to chamfer the edges, and I'll do that at the table saw. Now the yoke pivots underneath the oak block with a couple washers as a spacer. Now if the washers are loose, eventually they're just going to wear their way through the oak and the plywood. So I want to fasten them in place with a couple screws. Okay, that washer is not going anywhere. Some screws secure the post to the bottom of the wagon. Now this is a piece of three quarter inch thick MDO that I've cut to make the yoke. I've knocked off the corners at a 30 degree angle. I'm gonna wrap the edges with the same aluminum channel that I used on the back axle assembly. Okay, well that just about does it for today. Tomorrow we'll install the axle under that yoke, put the handle on, and then make the sides. Well, I wanted to take a quick test drive this morning before you got here and test out the comfort of this handle. This is actually the second one I've made for the prototype. I think this is the one I'm gonna stick with. It works pretty well. 
I'll show you how to build that in a minute, but first we want to finish making the front suspension. And I've already taken the time to drill out another fender washer, which is going to get attached to the top of the yoke. And that's now ready to be screwed in place. The axle for the front wheels passes through a solid piece of oak that's attached to the yoke. That means drilling a half inch hole almost 12 inches long. Now here's the piece of stock set up in the drill press. It's difficult to hold a piece like this vertical, so I've installed some wooden clamps and also some other clamps to hold a whole assembly from sliding around. Now I'm going to start drilling part way through. The drill press only allows me to go about three inches or so with the travel. That is my limit. So to get more depth, I'm just going to crank the whole assembly up, letting the drill bit go down through the part that I've already made. Okay, well, I've used up all of that bit that I can. The problem is I'm not all the way through yet. So I could add this extender to the bit and drill all the way down, but I'm afraid it'll drift off. So I'm going to disassemble it, turn it around, and use the same procedure to finish it off. Okay, that's what I want. Now there's one more hole to drill in this piece right in the center. Just misses the axle, and that's a bolt hole to secure it to the post. I think it's a good idea to chamfer all the edges to show. It makes it user friendly. Over the table saw, I've just nibbled away a little material on each end of this oak block to account for the aluminum channel so it'll fit tightly to the MDO. A little bit of construction adhesive and some screws, and we'll fasten it in place. Okay, let's see if we can put the front suspension together, starting with this 7 inch carriage bolt which slips up through the oak block. Okay. And then another fender washer as a spacer and to also make it turn more easily. And then the yoke assembly itself. Okay. Another washer. And I'm going to put two nuts on this so that I can lock them against one another so they won't come loose. Not too tight, though. I want it to move easily. And using two wrenches, we'll just lock it together. The axle and the wheels go on just like they did on the rear. I want to show you this little detail up front here. The handle is attached to the yoke with these oak blocks. And I want the grain running horizontally because that'll give it the most strength if we're pulling against it. So I've laid out the two pieces on this larger piece of oak. First thing I want to do is knock off the corners. So over here at my miter box, I've turned it to 45 degrees, and I've installed a stop block to keep my hands way clear of the blade. Now well, that takes care of the sharp edges once again. That takes care of the hole for the through bolt. Okay, that's a bolt hole to attach the block to the yoke. That nibbling step that I just completed at the table saw was necessary so that the block will fit tightly on the MDO and clear the metal. Now I can drill the holes through and bolt them in place. Okay, now this is a piece of one inch oak dowel, which is going to form the shaft of the handle. And I'm afraid it might split with all the movement down here at the yoke, so I'm going to slip a piece of one inch copper tubing over it and then drill my hole through. Okay, now that's the pilot hole 
Now I'll enlarge it to 3 eighths. Okay, that takes care of the 3 eighths hole. Now I'm going to drill one more hole at the top end of the copper pipe. And that's just so that I can put a small bolt through to relieve the pressure on the big hole. Now installing the shaft to the yoke takes some pretty good hand-eye coordination. And the idea is to get a washer on each side. So I'm going to use a short bolt to just hold this one in place for the moment. And then I'll use my longer through bolt and slip it through to one of the washers here. Now I've got to try to slip the whole thing together without losing the washers. I think we're going to get it. Now the bolt goes through and pushes the temporary one out. And now a washer and nut on the other end. I've laid out the handle on this piece of oak and just drilled a couple holes on the inside corners. Now I'm going to clamp it in my bench vise and cut out the rest of the inside with the jigsaw. Now that hole is a one inch hole that will receive the shaft. I'll show you what that hole is all about. That allows me to have the handle fit over the end of the shaft. Now I'm going to join the handle to the shaft with this iron dowel screw. So I'm going to have to drill a couple pilot holes. Okay, that's the dowel into the shaft, and now I should just have to spin on the handle. Well, now for the sideboards of the wagon, and they consist of stakes and slats. And I've set up to make the tenons on the bottom of the stakes. This cut first. Now I've lowered the saw to about a sixteenth of an inch to make these short shoulder cuts. The slats for the sideboards are made out of thin oak, which is not easy to find in a store, so you have to cut it yourself. And what I did is actually split some three-quarter inch stock right down the middle. Now my surface planer allowed me to remove all the saw marks and make sure that all the pieces were uniform in thickness. The slats are attached to the stakes with screws so I want to pre-drill and countersink for them. Well, those three-quarter inch plated screws should hold the slat securely to the stakes. Let me just pull it out. Flip it around. Well, now that we got two of them, maybe we can race them, but not before we paint them. I want the undercarriage of my wagon to disappear or lose it, so I'm going to paint it a gloss black. I'm starting with a coat of gray primer using a spray can with no fluorocarbons. Well, now with the black, the undercarriage really starts to disappear. 
the bed of the wagon, I want to be a bright red. So I'm starting out with a coat of latex acrylic primer. I want to show off the oak on the sideboards of the wagon. So I'm going to put on a couple coats of a marine super spar varnish. Well, what do you think of the red? Too red? Not red enough? I don't know. I think it's just right. Norm Abram is the author of the book, The New Yankee Workshop, which is available in bookstores and libraries nationwide.